Hey, happy, healthy women family. Welcome to another Coffee with the Coaches episode where we join you on the last Wednesday of every month to talk about the different questions that we get as coaches that maybe you've had as well. Or maybe you've thought, man, if I ever could ask a coach, I would like to ask them this question. So we're so grateful that you're here, that you're joining us and really just kind of diving into these things that, you know, sometimes we have in our minds, but it would be so great to get more information on or, or just kind of listen to what other people's perspective is on it. Because I don't know about you, but I learn a lot when I hear other people's perspectives on the things that I myself am wrestling with. So if you don't know me, my name is Meg Hepner. I am the branch director for Happy Healthy Women out here in South Surrey, British Columbia. I'm a life coach and I'm also the host of the Art of Being Human podcast. And with me today is Whitney. Whitney, you're a trailblazer here in Happy Healthy Women, also in British Columbia. Why don't you introduce yourself and what you do? So yeah, I'm Whitney Copeland. I am in Vancouver and I am a health and life coach working a lot with people who have chronic conditions or autoimmune disease. Yeah, I love that. Um, And it seems like I mean, maybe it's just because I'm getting older. I don't know. But like, do you remember in your 20s, you thought you'd live forever and your body would always work? (laughs) Right. And then all of a sudden you get a little bit older and you go, oh, I have all these, you know, little aches and pains. And all of a sudden it becomes something more serious. And so the work that you do helping people walk through their their health kind of difficulties, or even just getting really healthy is such a beautiful thing. So I'm grateful there's people like you. 22 years ago, I would have thought, oh, that's a resource I'll never need. But you know, (laughs) time is the great humbler. So no, so happy that you're joining us. And one of the things that I get asked all the time, and I wonder if you do as well, is a question on how do you actually show up in a way that's vulnerable Mm -hmm. without putting yourself at risk for a huge amount of either, um, you know, pain or embarrassment or whatever. So I don't know how things work for you, but I'm curious, do your clients come to you asking, how do I deal with the vulnerability that's coming up as I'm doing this work towards getting my health in order or, or trying to be the healthiest person I can be? Yeah, I think it comes up in different types of questions and people might not even be identifying the word vulnerability, Mm. but anytime somebody doesn't want to make a change because of something outside of themselves, that is a place where vulnerability is coming into play. So not wanting to be different from other people, not wanting to make special requests, those types of things is where you do have to step outside of your comfort zone when you have especially a chronic illness and you're doing things a little bit differently than the people around you. And I think the number one takeaway is you can't hide from the feelings that come along with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So when you say, how can you, you know, avoid the big kind of it's feelings, right? And this, the first step is really well noticing, but then starting to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I know people hate to hear that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know what? It's, I love you just like you cut right down into it because it's so true. The question that I get all the time, like I said in the beginning is how do I be vulnerable, but without any of the consequences is really what people are asking, right? How do I grow? But not have to deal with any of the growing pains. And that's not possible. Mm -hmm. And part of it is simply saying, can I get good at sitting with uncomfortable feelings? Yes. Realizing that in the end, what I need and the way I'm growing is more important than maybe what I, how I'm perceived in the community, right? Because I I totally can feel with your clients. I've been in that situation with myself where I've, you know, decided to make a a health change or whatever. And I'm sitting there with a bunch of girlfriends and we're all ordering. And I'm like, oh no, I have to order. And it's going to be like this big, like, what kind of oils do you cook with? And what this, and I'm like, oh, that's so embarrassing. And then realizing, wait, but my own health is a priority instead of going, you know, the, 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 
the vulnerability, I guess that's the right word, or just the uncomfortability of having to, you know, kind of go through that with a waiter and having people observe that I can do that. That's not as important as my own health. Um, but that can sometimes be such a difficult thing. So that leads me to a different question. How do you sit with uncomfortable emotions? Yeah, so something that I like to work on with my clients is like a visualization in a sense where you're sitting down, you're taking some time and you're envisioning the scenario and you're kind of running through the scenario. And you'll be surprised once you start paying attention how I don't what crazy, I guess is the word <laughs> your brain can get. Like it can just get so detailed about the worst case scenario. So once you become aware of that, you can say, okay, this isn't exactly how I want things to go. And you can create a new visualization of how you do want it to go. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially mentally rehearsing what's going to be happening. And you do this over and over again until you start to feel the way that you want to feel in this situation. So it's like practice. It's like performing, getting ready for a big performance. And then when you're in that scenario, it's not going to seem half as bad. So when we talk about not feeling the feelings or avoiding the feelings, doing this can make it not so bad in the moment so that it is bearable. And then it takes time to digest afterwards. If it didn't go the way that you went, why or why not? Maybe a journaling practice could be really beneficial there. And it's not that you have to do these things forever. You're just trying to retrain your brain. So don't think about it like, oh, for the next year, I'm going to be doing this. It's like baby steps. Start with your next event, your next social outing. Take the time ahead of time. Visualize it. Notice the worst case scenario coming up. Correct it to the story that you want to tell yourself. And then afterwards, assess how it went and how you could do it differently next time. Yeah, you know, I you make such a great point on rehearsing because the way that we're reacting normally is not even really us reacting. We are reacting to the way we've been trained to view the world by the expectations other people have given us, right? Because most of us have built our personality based on what the needs are of the people around us, right? Like my parents needed to be needed me to be like this. And so I became like this, you know, I was encouraged in this direction. And so I became like that. And a lot of the values or the, the way that we think of things, et cetera, et cetera, are not really our own. And so we're really responding on other people's expectations, other people's ideas. And when you stop and go, wait, I'm going to rehearse, you're really going, I'm in control for the first time. Yeah. Like I'm going to make my decision. I remember um, it was such a funny thing. Like my husband's family, um, they grew up on a, on a, in a more um, kind of not, they grew up in a very rural area where they didn't kind of go out to eat a lot, et cetera, et cetera. So they were pretty sheltered when they were growing up. And he remembers watching his dad always get really, really nervous anytime they were in a restaurant. And um, when he grew up, when he was like a teenager and he kind of started to go out with his friends and whatever, he would find himself doing the same thing. Every time the waitress came, he would get all clammy. He would start to kind of stumble over his words. He would get really uncomfortable. And he went, oh, you know, why am I doing this? Not realizing that he had seen it and was now simply reliving it. He was doing exactly the same thing that his dad had done. And he went, oh, wait, I don't have to be like that. I can be my own person. And then went, well, why would I ever be afraid of a waitress? Like, I, like, they're not scary. They're here to serve me, right? And all of a sudden it just clicked for him that he had been living by somebody else's values and limitations and beliefs. And he didn't have to do that. And it's amazing because we do that all the time. The, the, the way that we might feel uncomfortable or the way we might prioritize our health or our bodies or anything like that is so often not our own choice, but what we've seen modeled for us. And that's why the whole practicing thing is just like, really saying, this is now going to be my choice. I'm going to actually think this through. And then I'm going to have the courageous action to go with what I really want. I really want to be healthy. Therefore, I'm going to, to kind of manufacture this 
experience for myself instead of going through it blindly. Yeah, exactly. And every time we perform something, we are making that neurological connection stronger. So if we start to notice when we're doing it and then correct ourselves, now we're building neurological connections in our favor, which is so helpful because then that's going to become your new habit. It just takes a bit of effort at first, and then it starts to become easier and more second nature as you go. Yeah, I love that. You know, another way for myself personally, um, when I started to go, I want to live life on my own terms, but it gets very uncomfortable uh, because all of a sudden you're not just saying yes to things. All of a sudden you're not just going with the status quo. You're kind of stepping outside of that. One of the things I just began to really tune into um, is when does my body feel safe and when does my body not feel safe? And do I know how to bring safety to my body when I'm in in an experience where I don't feel safe? Right. So if you want to, whether it's your health, whether it's the way you want to raise your children, whether it's what you're going to be doing with your finances, whether it's, you know, what kind of career you're going to have, if you're stepping outside of the status quo, if you're stepping outside of what's expected of you and you're having to be vulnerable in that moment, knowing the way that your body responds to feeling unsafe and the way your body feels to or response to feeling safe is extremely important. And so I remember going, um, okay, where do I feel the safest? Like when I'm completely myself and I just totally let down, where do I feel the safest? And I started to go, okay, when I'm in that moment, so maybe it was, you know, when the kids were in bed and I was just sort of sitting on a chair reading a book and it was just like the end of the day, I'm like totally just calm. And I'm like, okay, this is what my body feels like when it's totally calm. My shoulders are down relaxed, you know, everything's fine. This is what it feels like. And then tuning into it and then going, okay, what about when I'm not right? And so I'd notice, oh, my shoulders are up, et cetera. And then when I'm in a situation where I needed to be vulnerable, I would remind myself, shoulders down, deep breath, relax, trying to bring my body into that state of relaxation. So I was responding differently to the vulnerability than I normally would have, which would be protection. And It's like you said, I had to practice and practice and practice that. And sometimes I forgot and that's okay. (laughs) And then go back to going, okay, wait, can you make your body feel safe again? And, and I found once I knew what my body did in different situations. And once I realized I could control it, Mm -hmm. that I could actually, the minute I tuned into it could make a different decision with my body. That to me was a, was the catalyst for going, oh, this is a change that's possible for me. This is something that I can really actually do. Yeah, I love that you're talking about the body because everybody is different, right? Some people are going to be thinking about it more mentally. Some people are going to be experiencing it more in their body. So having different strategies is super helpful. But one thing I notice about the way our brains work, like they're always trying to protect us, right? And keep us safe and small and, and comfortable we tend to make up, like I said, the worst case scenarios. And so starting to just pay attention to the words that are going through your head. Like Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. So with my autoimmune condition, I avoid many different foods and it does make getting together with family a little trickier. And especially when they try and go out of their way to do it right but they still don't get it quite right. And you're like, I can't really bend, not even for that. I'm sorry, I've made too much progress with my health. And saying no to somebody like your husband's mother or your husband's like 80 year old aunt, not easy. But what I noticed when I stopped to think about it was the thoughts going through my head. I'm like, they're gonna think I am selfish or... I'm always changing my mind and they can't keep up with what I'm eating. And I had all of these thoughts and I'm like, these are not useful to me. What would be more useful in this situation? And what I like to come back to is that when people are getting their defenses up about how I am being with my health, it's triggering something within them to think, what about my health? Like, Hmm, maybe they actually are like 
proud of you in a sense and wish that they could stand up for themselves the way that you stand up for yourself and it's triggering them in a certain way or you know I wish I could say no to gluten and sugar like how does she do it like how why is it so easy for her you know so it's coming up with scenarios that are going to work in your favor and help you feel that courage and confidence in the moment rather than that huge laundry list of all the negative of how they could possibly dislike you or disown you if you be yourself. Yeah, I I think that's so important. And it's such an interesting thing because whenever we make a decision, it takes us on a trajectory, right? And I think that's the most important thing to remember when you are having thoughts, what's the trajectory of this thought? Like, where is this thought going to take me? And if your thought is um, they don't like me or they think I'm high maintenance or, you know, everyone's going to think I'm just on a kick again or, you know, whatever. If, if you're thinking those types of thoughts, it's really going to take you in a trajectory where you begin to separate from people. Right. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden, I don't think, you know, we're not closed. I don't want to go, et cetera, et cetera. And so asking yourself, what's a thought I could have that would take me on a positive trajectory or take me somewhere new or different? Right. And so when you think to yourself, a thought when someone's made a meal for you, that was specially for you might be to go, oh my gosh, how much do they care for me that they would do this? Not only did they cook a meal for everyone else, but they specially did this for me. That's a, you're going in a completely different direction. If you have that type of thought, than you are, if you have a thought like, oh, I can't even bend. And now they must think I'm super high maintenance because super high maintenance takes you towards separation going, God, they must really care. That's so kind. All of a sudden takes you towards gratitude where you can go, you know what? I noticed what you just did for me. And I am so grateful. What would have made this work is if you just hadn't added the blah, blah, blah. And honestly, the fact that you put this this much effort into it just shows me, you know, how much you, I mean to you. And honestly, that's such a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. I really, really wish I could eat it. That's another huge component of it is honesty. And people are so afraid of being honest with one another. But in that situation where my husband's family had brought this thing that they had tried to, you know, make perfect for me and I I couldn't eat, I just, I literally told them, I said, at my last alter thyroid ultrasound, there was such significant improvement that I'm really sticking to what I'm doing because I can see how it's working for my health. And that was the end of it. They were like, perfect. Like, that's really good. But something else came up when you said, um, I'm just on a kick again. And something that I find really useful because I've been on all different types of diets and I have a lot of thoughts about this is you do the best you can with the information that you have. Now that I have better information, I'm doing better. So it's like, why are you changing your diet? You were vegan, you were paleo, because I'm keeping up with information. I'm learning. This is my job. This is my passion. Mm. And when I learn that something I'm doing is actually not best practice, I'm going to modify it. And I'm sorry if that comes across as wishy-washy or whatever it may come across to you. It's I'm learning as I go and I'm doing the best for my body as I go. Yeah. Uh, You know what? I I really, really appreciate that. My husband is also one of those guys who he loves health. Health is his hobby. He will sit there and read medical stuff. I'm like, what are you reading? And he'll read me a blurb. I'm like, I don't understand any of those words. He's like, wow, so interesting. I'm like, "Mm, interesting. Is that what you'd call that? He loves it. He just, he adores it. And so he's constantly modifying. Like he's constantly modifying, he's constantly trying new things. And sometimes he goes too. like, it can be so frustrating to have people go, but weren't you just, and he's like, right. But in the three weeks we've last seen each other, I've read so much information. I've listened to so many podcasts. I've researched so many ingredients that I'm now doing something different because I'm learning more and to be like, that's just part of my journey. But you know, one of the things that I think we're saying in all of these examples is really going, what's happening underneath it all? Mm -hmm. Really going about, instead of just saying, you know, because a surface level is you baked something for me, I can't eat it, we all feel bad. That's surface level, right? But if we go, what's happening underneath it all? You're making an effort for connection. And to you, it might feel like I'm rejecting your connection. I 
am committed to something and this feels difficult for me, right? So you're really going, what's happening underneath? And then when you talk about honesty, bringing what's happening underneath the surface to the front and saying like, I see what you just did for me. Yeah. I see this need to connect and how far you went to connect. I understand this probably feels like rejection. I want you to know that's not what I'm doing. It's simply like you said, the progress I've made. Right. Or even if you're, you're raising your children differently or going to work or starting a new business or, you know, whatever it is that's vulnerable for you really going, can I see what's happening behind the surface so that I can speak to that instead of just the surface stuff? Because if we stay on just the surface stuff, we often misunderstand each other and, and things get lost in translation because we're staying, you know, on the basics. But if you can really take a moment, and this is, I think, where it helps to make your body safe. Because when your body is in kind of like <gasps> the uncomfortability of a vulnerability and you're, you're, you're self-focused because you're in fight or flight or, or you're just really tense, if you can make your body feel safe, then all of a sudden you can go, what else is happening here? Because I'm safe. I don't have to protect myself. I don't have to worry that, you know, I'm going to be hurt here. I'm safe. So what's actually happening? And then bringing it into the, to the light so that people can talk about the real needs we're, we're expressing here. I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when I'm envisioning that, you know, having these heart to heart kind of conversations with people, then the thought is, well, how am I going to come across? I'm definitely one of those people who, when I'm having that type of conversation, tears come to my eyes. Like I, whenever I'm in that type of vulnerable heart to heart type of connection, it's like my body just wants to cry. Mm -hmm. And so I think being comfortable with however you are going to come across yeah. is part of it as well. Like how you're going to feel in that moment. Yeah. I, I love that. And it's such a, such an interesting thing. Cause we're, we're, and especially um, I feel like as we learn more about how, you know, abundant abundance works and manifestation works and, and, you know, using great languaging works, we often make the assumption that we need to come across as really positive, happy, you know, blissed out, excited people. Um, yeah. and, and, and that's not always true, right? Like sometimes we have hard emotions and can we be comfortable with them so that if they would show up while we're having a heart to heart, that that's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. That it's like, yep, yeah, this is also part of being human. I know my husband is such a, he's such a crier. Like he'll cry at the drop of a hat. And he used to be the same way. He used to be so embarrassed. Like if someone would tell like a sappy story, he'd be like, that's so beautiful. And he'd be like, Oh, I got to get it together. I got to be a man, you know? And, uh, and then one day he's like, screw it. Like, this is who I am. This is how I show up. And it's interesting to watch people respond to him having emotions. The amount of times when people go, I wish I could do that. Cause you just showed what you really felt. And I long to do that, but we all keep the veneer in front of us. Um, it's such a fascinating thing. But again, it takes vulnerability. It takes being really, really okay with yourself and what you're experiencing. Yeah. And especially if it's been a really long time where you've been acting a certain way and people expect you to be that way. And then suddenly you break out of that shell and they're like, what is wrong with you? Like, yeah. what is happening? It's, yeah. Yeah. So that's actually an interesting question because vulnerability is a beautiful thing, but you have to be wise with your vulnerability as well. Not everyone deserves all your vulnerability. Sometimes you're in a situation where you go, mm, not here because yeah. it isn't safe. So when you're in a situation like that, what do you recommend to still stay true to yourself, still you know, being honest, still looking at what's happening behind the scenes, but not putting yourself out there to people who really wouldn't value or appreciate or honor your vulnerability. Well, I can provide an example with my clients. We like with the mental rehearsal, if they're going out into a social situation and there's a lot of acquaintances, people who don't need to know what is going on with them. It's a, it's a one liner. It's a one liner that you're comfortable answering for your specific situation. And that's it. Mm. That's what, you know, because you do have to have boundaries and it's going to be a different set of boundaries for different people. 
So that is usually what I recommend. Like I'm, as you can tell, big on preparing ahead of time so that you're not thrown off guard when it does happen, especially with, with chronic illness, where it can be a can of worms. If somebody comes up to you and starts to question all about what you're doing and why. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've heard you mention a one-liner before, and I think that that's such a beautiful thing um, because it does allow you to have some, and I use this word very loosely, but some control over the situation because so often when people kind of come at you, it can feel come at you. It's maybe not quite the right way of saying it, but people can be inquisitive and you're going, "Mm, this is, this is not where I want to be, you know, sharing all these details, especially depending on, on, on where you are. Um, There's certain things that are super, super vulnerable, right? Like the way that you're raising your kids, maybe if that's where you feel vulnerable, you're not open to everyone's questions. It's a, it's a touchy thing to go, yeah, I'm going to raise my kids completely differently. Or, you know, if you're becoming a minimalist and people are like, what's wrong with you or, you know, whatever, um, to have that line that just says this far and no further. Yeah. And you can craft it in a way that it's going to be polite and to the point at the same time. And then there's always the option of excusing yourself and not in a dishonest way, but you know, I have to attend to my child or I'm going to use the bathroom or whatever it is. Like it's okay to do that once in a while. If you just want out of the situation, we're humans. We don't have to stand there and take it if we really feel threatened and we want out. That's okay. Yeah. I love that. And I think it's such a good reminder that it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you or with that other person. It was just the scenario wasn't conducive to both of you, right? Maybe they couldn't see how they needed to pull back and you were in a situation where you didn't want to share. So, because sometimes we're really, really quick to like label things like, oh, I messed up or, oh, it's, I'm weak because I had to excuse myself or oh, I should have said something. And it's like, no, sometimes we just go, "Mm, this is sort of an unhealthy situation. They don't know when to stop. I don't know when to stop talking. So I'm saying more than I want to say. And then now I'm feeling that I'm just going to remove myself. And that that's actually a real sign of strength to know when to just go, oh, I think I need to go. Mm -hmm. And that's where the awareness and paying attention to your thoughts comes in because you don't want to go, you know, run away to the bathroom and then have 10 minutes where you're just like, what did I do? What did I do? And have all these terrible thoughts going through your head. Just let it go, move on, go talk to somebody else. Maybe you'll even have a conversation with that same person again later on about a different topic. It's yeah. Yeah. You don't have have extra thoughts about it. I love that. I love that. Oh, humans and our extra thoughts. We love to analyze things to death and go, was it okay? Was it not okay? And you're so right. Sometimes it's like, oh, it was an experience. Move on. It's okay. It's all okay. Honestly, Whitney, I love this conversation about vulnerability. I love the idea of rehearsal, of calming your body down so it knows when to feel safe, of really listening to your thoughts and saying, okay, which one of these thoughts is beneficial? And so I really hope that for people who are watching this, that something kind of connects with them and they go, oh, that's something I'll either try or, oh, that's something I'm doing well. Um, and, And that this was a beneficial conversation for people to listen in to. And so I'm really grateful that you joined me today and we'll be doing this again next month. So for those of you listening who go, oh, you know what? I have a quick, I have a question. I have a question that I've been thinking about that I would love some different perspectives on, put it in the chat. Um, We'd love to know about it and we'll talk about it next time. Or if you have a thought about vulnerability, put that in the chat as well. Um, Share your experience or what you think about it because the more that we share our experiences, the more one, we can be connected because we realize we're all having a human experience and two, the more we can all learn. So definitely um, reach out or look Whitney up. Whitney, I know you have some great things coming up um, in the next little while. Before we run off, why don't you share what you have coming up or how people can get connected to you? So you can find me on my website, WhitneyCopeland.com. All of my social links and the link to my YouTube channel are there. Um, I'm actually hosting my workshop today. So I will be um, presenting some information on next month's in the coming days. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Until next month, take good care. Bye.